be sure to check out my Patreon for weekly exclusive interviews, extra content on VV and Omi, and building generational wealth, as well as money management tips from experienced whales. Yo, what is going on, y'all? I'm Cavell Anderson, and we are back with another VV and Ecomi video. In this one, we're going to be talking about something very, very interesting. So coming out of the gate of this interview, they start off going over something that's pretty massive to all of our investments because a lot of the whales that I talk to, a lot of the whales that I know, the reason that they aren't buying is because they don't have a way to get their money out. They don't have a way to get funds out of this project. And people have put in a lot of money, like hundreds of thousands, like like hundreds of thousands of their own dollars. Now, some of us have earnings where we've earned certain amounts, but some people have put that in and like even though there was no like cash out or anything like that the people who are actually motivated and actually puts in the work they all have been able to cash out they all can get their money out that's why none of the none of the whales are worried none of the whales have actually cared like regular investors because regular investors don't have the time or freedom to figure out there's ways to legitly and safely get your money out um like so so the whales the whales who know this that's why they've been chilling relaxing the whole time but after they shut down the ability to transfer collectibles now they can't do business the same way that they were doing. They can't they can't go to another whale and be like, okay, yo, I, I'm gonna need you to buy this off me. Let, let's let's negotiate a price. That then they can't go through the negotiations because now you can't send items to each other. So you can't one person can't send money, then the other person can't send the send the collectible. Like so so that literally just basically had their assets stuck in the app for the first time, like like normal people, like everybody else. So um, the fact that they're addressing this and in the way that they address it, I actually think that this is huge. So yeah, we're going to jump into this. Be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications. But yeah, this is a massive deal. This is a big deal um, because this is this is what a lot of whales actually want. This is this is what a lot of people who can actually raise the floors of these um, collectibles, this is what they care about. So I, I suspect that mo a lot of them will start coming back in and start making plays and, and doing things on the app after this um after this happened so yeah let's jump into it let's get it um when it actually came out we made uh, a decision to disable transfers of collectibles uh between accounts as a way to uh, kind of really kind of put the screws to the bots so you want to tell us a little bit more about where we're at in with that process and how we're looking in terms of re-enabling collectible transfers at some point, Dan? Yeah, um, so you know the team has been working very hard on bot protection. Obviously, uh, you know the community was getting frustrated about it, and obviously we're also getting frustrated about it. So um, yeah, very pleased with the progress that the team has made. They've, they've put really a massive dent uh, in the ability for bots to participate in the way that they have been. Uh, over the past months and you know we've already seen a number of bot programs shut down or and you know some of them have even just run off and disappeared with people's money and you know I mean this is just as a as a PSA you know you're buying a program off someone who is a scammer who is more than likely going to scam you so just something to keep in mind if you see that that kind of stuff coming up um, but yeah, overall, I'm, I'm feeling very happy with uh, what we've done on, on the bot side of things. And we obviously will still continue to make improvements everywhere we can. Um, in terms of collectible transfers, we will be bringing that back in. Um, and that will more than likely come into play when the uh, first phase of the Master Collector program comes out, which we'll touch on a little bit later. See, now that that's massive, like the Master Collectors program. So essentially they're going to be basing it around the people and how active they actually are, how active you are, how long you've been collecting, how long you've been holding the things that you are collecting. So, and I think that this is perfect because now it's going to force, I mean, to be fair, it's easy to get around just this, but it is an extra step. Now, but I, like um, something that is common is, is what's called bot farms. And basically that's, that's these people who literally it's their job to get accounts in the perfect condition for someone to use it in, with a bot. Like that's, that's literally what they do all day. So one account, if you need X amount of requirements in order to for it to be seen as a legit account and you can actually use it as a bot, their job is to sit around, make this account, meet those requirements. Okay, now that, that account is ready to sell. 
do the, do the same thing with this account. Now that's ready to sell. And they literally do this all day, every day. And then eventually they'll have like, okay, we have a thousand accounts right here that I can sell to somebody for X amount of dollars. Maybe I can include a bot with it so they can use this if they want. And now they have a business. So, so that's what these bot farms actually sit around and do. But what this does is add another layer there. So it makes it, it makes them have to put in more work to be able to do it. You can still get around this just like you can get around KYC. But I think once they add in all of these things together, like, like, like doing this, like making it depend on your collector's level and, and like, because now you have to spend money, you have to have things, you have to be doing things, especially depending on how, how, uh, uh how strict they make the, uh, requirements. Because then you're going to have to put money into these accounts and keep money sitting into all of these accounts. And let's say you have to have like, you have to have like $200 worth of worth of master collector points. Like, let's say you have to have $200 worth of master collector's points, right? So now you have to put $200 in every single account. So you have two options. Either you have enough money where you can literally make a bunch of accounts and leave $200 sitting in each of them. Or you don't have that type of money and now you have to use the same 200 so you put 200 in this account let it sit then put 200 put that same 200 in the next one let it sit so now either way it it, it causes a hassle it, it create it, yeah it's a hassle for um people who would want to do these bot farms and stuff like that so and that's just one line of defense they also have the other stuff that they're doing so this is really good it's really smart and that's going to be really impactful for the future of vv especially when it comes down to handling the bot so this was a smart decision for that reason, in my opinion. But yeah. Um, for the reason being is that, you know, the Master Collector program really identifies who are the, you know, a, a legitimate user who holds collectibles, who collects sets, participates in the app. And therefore, you know, we can determine that they're a fairly legitimate user. Um, and at that point, uh, if you are at a certain level or a certain rank, you'll have features like collectible transfers, um, uh, re-enables. But in the meantime, obviously people can still continue to, to buy and sell through the, through the VB secondary market. In my opinion, they should limit transfers based on activity. So not just go about it where the master collectors like points, like once you reach a certain threshold, you just have access to the feature. They should upload, they should have limits. So if you're in a certain level you can only transfer like one or two items then if you level up more to where okay this guy really has to be collecting you unlock a little bit more and then the top tier where you unlock the full capability to just transfer whenever you want and maybe the top tier is like a thousand dollars or something a thousand dollars worth of assets or maybe even higher i feel like i feel like if you are investing in vv but that's common for us because we are all so early regardless of like you in right now who thinks that you're struggling who thinks that you're late who thinks that there's no opportunity you're in early too like it, it's easy for anyone here right now to get a limit of a thousand dollars it just is if you make the proper decisions you might not have the education to but it is easy for anyone absolutely anyone so i mean a threshold like that would be would be easy to meet like maybe maybe like ten thousand would be more reasonable there because i think i think that that's also easy for anyone as well like you can start with very little and do that on vv you just have to know what you're doing but um yeah that being said i, I think that they they should do it in that way so it's not just uh okay once we hit a thousand dollars then you you have access because then like that that's just going to mean some well some well could still fund like bots and stuff and and get them get them you know get them verified so they could passes real users on the platform that'll still be kind of easy but if you got levels then that makes it so these bots can only would only be able to transfer like one collectible in the future or something like that so that that still adds even more restrictions and complexity and as you level up it gives you more incentive to want to level up and want to hold your collection because it constantly comes with more and more benefits so yeah Excellent. Okay, great. And in the meantime, we're continuing to kind of weed out all of the, the remaining kind of bot accounts that had listings. And after obviously after the 30 days, they'll be automatically delisted, but we're also going through that, you know, somewhat uh, nightly process of kind of removing some of the, the quote unquote farms. Um, so shout out to the support team who has been working uh, with all of the feedback from the community uh, into getting those um, delisted and making the uh, secondary market a little bit better of a, an experience for everybody. So appreciate your patience, everybody. Thank you on that and dealing with us uh, while we make sure to clean everything up.
All right, next up on the agenda, we had uh, recently had some cool utility and airdrops from Matt Gondek, artist Matt Gondek. Um, you know, we had a couple of things actually come with that drop. There was a uh, secret rare airdrop for uh, holders of failure control from the Deadbeats. There was a Deadbeat street print for holders of the full set of weapons racks. And then there was a little Easter egg of the matte animated Deadbeat when placed next to the black and gold uh, weapon rack, what I thought was really cool. And Matt was instrumental in bringing those ideas to the table, and we were excited to help him bring those to fruition. Uh, David, do you want to talk to us a little bit about our kind of general gifting and utility philosophy and um, if we might be able to see some of those types of things uh, with artists moving forward? Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, we pride ourselves very, you know, a lot in VV that we do want to bring more and more utility to these NFT that our holders are owning. The whole idea is to reward, you know, holders with surprises. You know, what else will these NFT do outside when you first own these and using the AR function? Um, so we do work closely to QA programs, um, you know, and I think we have done that with a couple of the Pry, um, the Rewind Collectives uh, this month. Some couple of them have now the initial two that came out, Cleopatra, Emilia, uh, have now turned into utility that, that with the moving video. Um, and just going back, we are going to continue to work with each individual artist to come up with new creative ideas. And Matt has really demonstrated, you know, another different level of utility. Rather than just selling it, he's giving it to the fans who, mm. you know, he wanted to um, give everyone have something uh, apart from the first what they own. Great. Yeah. And that, you know, utility doesn't stop there with not only, as you mentioned, collectible upgrades in the case of Rewind Collective, but um, ideas about, you know, animation when placed next to another collectible or even just hair drops as Matt Gondek did, but also moving into things um, more like we did with Golden Moments, for instance, where we had, uh, you know, Disney Plus subscriptions or upcoming, we've talked about it a lot, promo codes. Uh, in enabling some of those types of things to enable new marketing programs with our licensing partners, et cetera, or even possibly in-person events. Um, is there anything that you're looking uh, particularly forward to in terms of uh, the promo code functionality without giving any uh, hard details away? Yeah, I, I think with the month of May and June, we'll see a lot more NFT that we're releasing uh, with our partners that will have a lot more utility built behind it. And so that's big. We're going to be seeing a lot of utility coming in the up the upcoming two months. I mean, so hopefully they keep this timeline, <laughs> but yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I would assume that it's going to be coming within the next four, four months at this point, to be honest with you. But, um, yeah, so we should be seeing a lot of utility coming. So that's going to be interesting to see the type of utility that we have. Like we know that utility is going to be a big deal. I actually did a, a live on Facebook or no Twitter, like Twitter the other day or yesterday, I think, where I was actually talking about how utility is going to be so much bigger for collectors. Like, um, and I was talking about how the way people collect is going to change, in my opinion. I don't think that collecting is going to remain the same as it's always been, because back in the day, there was no utility. There was no... So, so for instance, Marvel Comics number one, it's it's valuable based off of what it is, its historic value and things like that. And that's always going to be valuable for those reasons. But in the future, now we're having people born into a world where they're going to be born with the digital Marvel Comics number one that comes with utility. Like, oh, this gets you a free ride at Disney. This gets you a free something in the metaverse. This gets you this. This gets you that. So you have the Marvel Comics number one, the digital version that comes with five different forms of utility digitally and five different forms of utility in the in the physical world. Obviously, it's going to be more desired because if you own a Marvel Comics number one that sits in a vault or somewhere safe in your house, if you own a Marvel Comics number one, the digital version, now you can do a bunch of stuff with this. You can also rent it out so the person you rent it to can do all those things with it. So 
I mean, I think that we're moving into a world where it's going to be utility based and people are going to collect things and hold things based off of utility as well. Um, I know a lot of the OG collectors is like, ah, uh, the utility is secondary, but I, I definitely disagree with that. I disagree that it's secondary because it's going to be so many different collectibles and we're going to be in a digital space. These collectibles are going to be cool. There's going to be so much different utility added where it, it might not even matter as much what's first. It might just comes down to what is it most beneficial for me to be holding? And then it's going to be beneficial. Like we're going to move into a world where it's beneficial. Like these companies could have whole divisions um, focused on adding different utilities because utilities is what's going to make these collectibles more and more valuable. Like the second that Disney says, you hold in Marvel Comics number one, you get a free Disney movie every single year. Okay, that's a little utility. What? What? How much would you pay for something like that? What's that worth? Now you get a free, you get a free day or, or free three days at Disney Disney World. Now how much would you pay for that Marvel Comics number one? You get a free week at Disney World. You can do anything you want in the theme park for a week. Now how much would you pay for Marvel Comics number one? Now you get a, you're you're a part of that special memberships club at Disney at, at at Disney World. Now how much would you pay? So you see where I'm going with this? It's like they can continue building and building and building utility that will really continue to raise the floor of what people are willing to pay for these collectibles. And I believe that that's the world that we're moving towards. And that's basically what I was talking about in the Twitter space because if they if they do start having whole divisions dedicated to adding a bunch, you can't do that with a physical comic. Now, the physicals are still going to be very valuable, but they're going to become like antiques. It's going to become like almost like it's almost it's already that kind of, but it's going to be like they're all like almost museum type pieces. Like you can't do nothing with a dinosaur fossil fossil either, but it's still very valuable because of what it is. So it's like I think that comics is going to be like that, like comics and, and, and a lot of the stuff that you collect now is going to be like that as we move into a world where utility becomes king and it really becomes king. Because DC has their license and stuff so many places, we have to assume, like, ho hopefully Disney stays with VV only as long as possible, but we have to assume that these other brands are going to do the same, which means if everybody has all these different IPs, what's going to stand out about them is the type of deals you can secure for the utility based around them. And when it comes to doing deals with licensors, I still, I still 100% stand behind VV. Like, they're the only ones proven to be able to do something at this scale. So, yeah, some other projects may get some cool deals with some of these IP, but I, I trust Vivi to get the best deals. And that's why I still like Vivi is king. I'm bullish about that because even if we move to a future utility, I think that Vivi is in the best spot to win. So, yeah, that's just my opinion, though. And, uh, and obviously, you touch a major point about, you know, in-person uh, events eventually if the, any of these artists do run a solo show, if you own something it could be an entry tickets uh to these events and that's the whole idea of building behind the the utility value is uh having that exclusivity for you to do x x amount of things with it awesome and uh i'm just gonna skip ahead quickly as you, as we mentioned um you know in-person events all right, Joe. So, so we're going to end it here, man. Um, let me know what you all think in the comment section down below. I would definitely love to hear more opinions about my thoughts on utility and how massive I think it is. Um, I think it only it, it just only, it makes sense to me. Now, I do want to hear some counter arguments. I do want to hear some different perspectives and thoughts on the topic. Um, but yeah, I, I think that we're, we're born into a world like because you have to think I, I made an example yesterday as well that even games are now having extra added utility. I mean, uh, uh, the whole point of a game is to play it and have fun playing it. And they're adding utility to that. So just having a stale collectible that you can look at and argument into reality, that's going to get boring. Like the world is moving too far advanced for, for just having something like a comic book, just being able to read it. I mean, the world is moving too far advanced for that to last long. With a video game, now you can make money. So the utility is this video game that you're playing pays you for playing it. It pays you for your time. So now with that type of utility added to gaming, you think that they're going to just have a collectible that you can just put in AR and that's the, that's the biggest utility. That's like, no, like now these things are going to have to come with multiple different forms of utility and that's the future for digital collectibles. Um, so yeah, let me know y'all thoughts in the comment section down below, man. I definitely would uh, love to hear some opinions on this. In my, in my opinion, this is the route that we're going. This is the direction that the entire world is moving to. This is not just the VV thing. I think that all in, th this is going to be all NFTs. 
Um, but yeah, that's just my thought. Let me know what you all think. Be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications, and I will catch you all in the next one. Peace out, y'all.